Next, we talk to Kay and Barry Zwirling. They have been members of the Santa Cruz Jewish community since the 1940s. I came to town in September of 1947, I guess it was. We didn't even know there was a temple in Santa Cruz, and it was about uh, a week or two before the High Holy Days. So um, we went to San Jose to temple. And then when we came back, uh, we looked around at the different shops on Pacific Avenue, and we saw High, uh, Morris Abrams. And then we went in there and asked them, do they have to go to San Jose for a temple? And they said, no, we have one here. <laughs> we were a very small community when we arrived. And uh, we met in a private, what was a private home. A private, and uh, I'd say there probably weren't more than 25 families. We all felt our Jewishness a great deal. We felt that we needed each other. Um, so we did, most of the Jewish people did many things together. And so our, our temple was also a Jewish center. It was a, a social meeting place. The older people were Orthodox and they set the mood so that uh, I believe at that time we only had kosher food in our temple. And I think I should say that being Jewish was a little bit it was, you knew that you were different. There was, there was uh, not, uh, there was anti-Semitism. There really was, and most of it was not overt, but it was here. And most of us felt that to be comfortable as a Jew, we had to be with our own people. And we did most of our socializing with our own people. And do you feel that's changed? Oh yes. Well, well, it'll be interesting to find out how we, how the situation evolved from the old temple to the present temple, just to show the difference in approach on getting, on getting your new accommodations. Mm -hmm. Now this old temple, which had been in existence for many years when we came in 1947, uh, an old Victorian house on Chestnut Street, and it's still there. And we, we met there, and there was always talk of uh, moving and getting a nicer place. Not bigger, but nicer. That wasn't a residence, a real temple. But there was only talk, and several people would pledge their money towards a new temple. But we needed one person who would be the catalyst to make the change. And that person turned out to be Kay's mom, Mrs. Rebecca Russo. One day she shows up at one of the meetings and she said, I sold the old temple. Now we have to go out and buy a new one. And they said, what? And she said, yes, you've been, you've been pledging money towards a new temple. Well, now you have to put up because the old temple is sold. And she presents the check. It was $7,000 for that old temple. Well, their bluff was called. So we made the rounds quickly and we picked up another $10,000 with uh, $1,000 pledges from the people who had pledged. Now we had $17,000. There was a committee went out to buy a lot, and it was shortly after that they bought the lot on Bay, where we are now. And in three... $2,200. Yeah, it was a pretty cheap thing. Anyhow, in three or four months, that whole temple was built. We even had a temple committee that actually designed the temple among ourselves. We didn't have to get an architect. We didn't have to get fundraisers. But to see how the situation has changed now. You've got to have an architect. Yeah. And, Everyone uh, was personally involved. Um, Charlie Levine, who is Arnold Levine's father, and he uh, passed away, uh, spent months every single day overseeing uh, the construction. He was retired, and he was able to purchase the uh, seats in the sanctuary. They were used. Uh, but they were inexpensive, and uh, they were good ones from an old theater in San Jose. And purchased the lights, and, I and the lights that are there now, those beautiful lights up there. They were all Charlie Levine's doing. He bought them in San Francisco. There was a great deal of personal love that went into the, the putting together of everything. 
It was a very, um, it was a close, nice feeling. Leo Herman should be mentioned. Leo and Sarah Herman. And Leo took over the rabbinical and the religious chores, where he conducted Friday night services for as long as we could remember before there was any rabbi there. And there was never a time that he missed. And he could chant for the best of them. Arnold Levine, we, we can credit him with holding the religious uh, portion of this community center together until we got our first rabbi, Rabbi Lieber, who incidentally was a renegade. He was, he was fun. Very, to listen to his sermon, you were listening to poetry. He was marvelously well read and he could speak very well. But he was also so a little bit of a, uh, he was an unorthodox rabbi. He was an author too, he wrote a book. And he wrote a book, Was There Really a Jesus? <laughs> and we almost ran him out of town when we heard he was going to publish that right here in Santa Cruz. He just sort of shake things up for the Jewish community and we, we always wanted to keep a low profile. So he moved to San Francisco. Then we had Rabbi Lazowick shortly after that, and he was also a, uh, a cursing and cussing sort of a person, a real uh, a powerful personality, and he knew Rabbi Levin, we found out, and they had always been arch enemies in their religious uh, uh, lifetime. So Lazowick stayed with us until finally he moved to someplace in Nevada. I think he went up to Reno to officiate there. And he was with us about five to seven years. And then Arnold took over and held us together until we engaged Rabbi Lippa. Mm -hmm. And since then it's been happily ever after. Mm -hmm. It's been very nice. Well, this Rabbi Lippa's doing a great job. Right. Keeping us together. We're here interviewing Rabbi Litvak, um, who's the rabbi of Temple Bethel. Why did you come to Santa Cruz? I came to Santa Cruz originally in 1974 as a result of being a student at the Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute.